himself gave some to the apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, for the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, the perfect man to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And we should no longer be children, tossed and thrown, and care more about every wind of doctrine.
ministry, and they are going to tell you uh, why they want to thank Pastor Davis. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for always uh, for always being kind. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, about teaching us about the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for teaching us about the Bible. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for serving the church and bringing souls to Christ through the spreading of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for talking about the Holy Bible. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for teaching us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for helping us. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for your grace of for whenever we need help. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for teaching us the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for doing everything you can for the church and my life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for all that you've done for each and every one. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for supporting the youth in whatever we do. Thank you, Pastor Davis, for being our pastor for 19 years. <laughs> pastor Davis, we want you to know that you make us happy. Thank you for all the ways you lead and guide our church. Thank you for the great example of living a life of faith. You are a blessing to the, our church, and we are learning and growing in the way of the Lord. We thank you and honor you on your special day. Amen. Thank you. Now, at this time, they are going to play the selection on the steel drum, You Make Me Happy. And they are going to smile. <laughs> Outside of Pastor Davis's office, everything that they say. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to see if they're going to smile. <laughs>
because you deserve it. It's not because you've been so good. It's not because you're so holy. It's only because of his grace and his mercy. He's blessed us again because of his grace and his mercy. God has afforded us one more chance. And I'm thankful for it. I should have. I didn't say could have. I should have been dead. The songwriter said, I should have been dead sleeping in my grave, but God made old death behave. And that's enough to say, God, I thank you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We serve the magnificent, almighty, almighty God. It is preaching time. I said, it is preaching time. It is preaching time. It is preaching time one more time to hear God speak to us. And we have a, a, a well able preacher in the house today. For the last few years, Pastor Richard Booker has been joining us in this celebration. And I don't take it for granted that it is 19 successful years. 19 successful years that God has been blessing this congregation of people. The pew and the pulpit, the people and the preacher. And I'm glad about it. God has given us another chance just to say thank you. And I want to thank the New Beginning Church for pausing today to recognize September 7th, 2004. Well, I got that call right around 1030 at night to say that the people have chosen you. And I'm glad that these people have chosen so So we are honored to have my mentor, my friend, my confidant, the proud pastor of the Little Zion Church in Kellington, Texas. Will you join me and welcome him? Will you stand to your feet? So welcome.
standard they made. Give me that Baptist finger. <laughs> Make their ways to the exit. As a preacher, I came to church on Sunday night and as a local minister, the pastor asked him to preach. He consented and when he got up he said that if I had known that I was going to have to preach tonight, I would have stayed at home. And there was a sister in the church that cried out, I would have too. So, I'm glad that you're here. We are so grateful to God for the opportunity to be here with Pastor Davis and the New Beginning family. Amen. Amen. I love him, I love all of you, uh, because I believe that we all love the Lord. Amen. And so this is just a good day that we've come to share with you. Now, I need you to pray for me. I used to say that um, in years past because I heard others say it and I just picked it up and I spoke to pray for me. But now when I say it, I really mean it. I need you, amen, to pray for me. Amen. And uh, if you all still feel kind of Baptist, I ask you to say amen. Amen. We're just delighted to be here. 19 years, Pastor has been laboring as the Lord has assigned him uh, here at this at this place, and a lot of things uh, transpires over that span of time. When he came here, uh, he probably had no idea, as many of us, that he was only four years away from seeing the first black president of the United States. Amen. Did y'all guess that one? Amen. No, you didn't guess it. Because the one that was elected hadn't quite figured it out. And there are a lot of things that have happened over those 19 years, just four years beyond Y2K, when we weren't really sure what was going to happen at the turn of the century. Events used to be that when we talked about guns, we were generally talking about hunting. Now, when we talk about guns, we're worried that people are going to be slaughtered for no particular reason. All of these things have happened in the few short years that Pastor Davis has been laboring here. Might I announce to you that the next 19, 20 years, the events will speed up. The world will become more evil. But just as the world becomes more evil, the word of God All right now. is always important. Amen. 
out of all of the things that have changed, the word of God is right. still the same. Yes, amen. And so today, as we celebrate, the only thing that I can offer you is God's word. Amen. We don't even preach the way we did 19 years ago. Amen. Some of what they call preaching, uh, my mom and them wouldn't listen to. But y'all got used to that stuff. <laughs> but uh, all I'm saying to you is that things have have changed and will continue to change world that is always unfamiliar. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the world, it's still an unfamiliar place. But we do not know what tomorrow holds. But thank God that we know who holds tomorrow. I'm through. Let me close. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. And then thank we'll be out of here. Dr. D. Leon Everett said once that uh, he was talking to us. He said that, you know, whenever you get ready to do something. As a preacher, folk expect you to read a little something. If you don't read it, uh, they don't think you got anything to say. Well, you can read it and still not have anything to say. But let's ask God's blessing upon us as we prepare our hearts to receive his word. Gracious God, our Father, Lord, how we do thank you for being the giver of every good and every perfect gift. Lord, how we thank you for your son Jesus who came into this world, humbled and died, that we might have a right to the tree of life. Thank you, O God, for your Holy Spirit that keeps us and vouch for us each and every day. Thank you for this day that you have made that we might rejoice and be glad in. Now, God, we pray that you will take us out of self and that you will speak as only you know how to speak. We pray, God, that we will have obedient hearts as we receive your word, we will do your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 In the book of Isaiah, chapter 21, Isaiah, chapter 21. <clears throat> And um, if we would look at verse 6 and some verses thereafter, we will find these words, Isaiah 21, um, verse 6, reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, we'll find these words. For thus the Lord said to me, Go, set a watchman. Let him announce what he sees. When he sees riders, horsemen in pairs, riders on donkeys, riders on camels, let him listen diligently. Very diligently. Then he who saw cried out 
but a watchtower I stand, O oh Lord, continually by day. And at my post, I'm stationed whole night. And behold, here come riders, horsemen in pairs. And he answered, fallen, fallen is Babylon. And all the carved images of his God. He has shattered to the ground. Oh, my threshed and went up once. What I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I announce to you the oracles concerning Duma. One is calling to me from Seir, watchman, what time of the night? Watchman, what time of the night? The watchman said, Morning come, and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire, come back again. May God bless his word as it is read. Amen. This morning, my dears, as we uh, celebrate the Lord and uh, the accomplishments and how he has used uh, our preacher, our pastor, our friend, our loved one, Pastor Davis, I would endeavor share with you what the Lord shared with Israel all of those years ago. What is it that God said to them that we ought to know today? God said that that was a need to watch. There was a need to repent. And there was a need to turn to God. Amen. A need to watch. A need to watch. A need to repent and a need to turn to God. My dears, life is full of stumbling blocks. Stumbling blocks and danger. And keeping a watchful eye and being prepared to, to face the problems of the day is of the utmost necessity. If we are sleeping while doing anything, it can cause danger and problems. When we fail to concentrate on that that we ought to be doing, we will find that we put ourselves and sometimes others in danger. So may I say to you that the word of God teaches us to be vigilant, to be prepared, to be ready 
to face whatever life puts in our way. And it teaches us also that as we move through life and as we deal with the issues of life, that there comes times that we must, yes, repent. Babylon is a picture of a prideful people. I believe the scripture says that pride go up before destruction. Which means that those who are prideful are at least on a road toward destruction. Babylon was a prideful people, a prideful government, and they defied the laws and the word of God. Listen, we live in a time when those of us that ought know better find ourselves defying the word of God. We, 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 we harness up or we draw into relationships with arrogant people and arrogant and prideful governments. My brothers and my sisters, God does not tolerate us being prideful. God does not tolerate people who are godless. And Babylon represented all of the evil systems and institutions that were known during that day. Why am I talking about Babylon? Babylon is important here because God was concerned that his people, instead of depending on him, had turned their attention and were depending on Babylon. I'm not sure in the study of this text if they had some type of covenant relationship. However, it would seem that they at least had a vassal relationship where that they expected Babylon, God's people that is, expected Babylon to protect them from the Assyrians. My dear God is a jealous God. And God does not allow us as believers to depend on anyone but him. And so here they are following a prideful People. Here they are following people who uh, lived and operated in dark places. People that were destitute as far as religion is concerned. In other words, they may have been giants intelligently but they were midgets morally we have to be very careful that we don't minor in the major and major in the minor but it's so easy 
And listen, I do not come to cast some kind of a shadow over you, for I live in this world myself. And I am to deal with the trials and temptations just as you. Now, 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 there is a little difference, and let me throw that in. Uh, this is my commercial for the morning, and let me just throw it in, get it out of the way so that you and I know where we're going. Uh, uh, now, me and Pastor Davis, we ain't like y'all. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know, if, if that was the case, God would have had you up here. <laughs> Amen. He did not call you. Yes, sir. Amen. And, and so don't say that he's a man just like I am. No, that's not true. Amen. Help me if you can. I just want to get that clear. Uh, 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 but we do have to face, or we are faced with uh, similar situations yes, sir. as any other person. Yes, but here is the thing. It has befallen us to share with you the word of God so that you can find the path and walk therein. This passage of scripture shows that the believers of Isaiah's days were desperately needing to look ahead to the days that God had promised them. God had promised that he would deliver them from their oppressors. That he would deliver them from the threat of attack. But here they are kowtowing. Here they are depending on the Babylonians to protect them from their enemy. Now Ramon said that God is a battle axe in a time of battle. And so Ramon did not depend upon the government or somebody else to protect her in a time of trouble. But here God's chosen people, Israel, is uh, uh, depending on a, 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 a dark nation such as the Babylonians, to defend them. But God said that, listen, what you need to do is you need to set a watch. Why did God want them to watch? We hear folk, I hear folks saying, I hear preachers say, just watch what God's going to do. And, 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 and listen, uh, uh, a watchman must have uh, a trained eye. Yes, sir. Just anybody can watch. Yes, uh, you may be able to read the tea leaves, but you must have a trained eye in order to watch and see what God is doing. I see y'all ain't going to help me. Uh, but in order for Israel to know that what the prophet was saying was true, God said to Isaiah, have them to set a watch. Get a prepared person and place that person in the watchtower. And that person is to watch. And if they see uh, horses and chariots approaching, if they see different things happening, then they'll know that it's about to go down. In other words, the Babylonians are about to come. And, 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 and so instead of you watching so that you can be afraid and run somewhere and hide, I want you to watch so you can see what I'm going to do. I wish that God's people in our day and time, rather than uh, being faced with so much consternation and hesitation, would just watch and see what God is doing. I don't know if you realize, my brothers and sisters, how far God has 
brought up. Yeah. Amen. In the few short years that you and I have been here on the earth, God has brought us not from a long way, but he's actually brought us all the way. Yeah. Lord, help me if you can. It, it wasn't just a few days ago that I lived in Arkansas and depended on the cotton fields as a way of making a living. Help me somebody. But the Lord reached down and thank God that he did. He picked me up out of the cotton fields of Arkansas and sent me to an institution of higher learning. And I'm thankful that when I got there, I didn't forget about God. But I found out that the end of education was to know God and God's laws and purposes of his universe. And God took that little education. Help me somebody. And, and elevated me from the cotton field and brought me to his pulpit. But we need to be prepared as we are told to watch and see what God is going to do. God needed to show his people that Babylon was fallible. That Babylon would fall just like any other nation. So then the watchman is there watching. And somebody decided, let's ask the watchman a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watchman, mm -hmm. what of the night? Mm -hmm. So many words, what time is it? Mm -hmm. The watchman said, well, the night is almost over. Daytime is coming. Yes, but he hurriedly said, but night's coming back. Yeah. Help me somebody. You see, just because uh, you see the light of day does not mean that that's the end of God. He said, listen, just as night is going to disappear, it's going to make its way back around. And whatever sin it is that you're guilty of, uh, night's going to keep on coming until you repent of your sin. That's why we're told in verses 11 and 12 that it is important that we repent. I don't know about church folk, so-called Christians, that have lost the taste for repentance. Oh, help me somebody. How can I wear the burden of sin and to wear it so proudly that I will not come to God in contrition with a broken heart and cry out to him, Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. Don't blot me out, but blot out my transgressions so that I can have a pure heart. But when I don't repent, I must where the burden of sin and sin will weigh you down. Sin will cause you, yes, to go against the very things that you know God would have you to do. So there is in this passage a lesson that says we ought to, yeah, repent for our sins. Because just as sure as it's daytime now, uh -huh. nighttime okay. is coming. Yeah. Last but not least, yeah. yes, there is a need for us to turn to the Lord. Yeah. Yes, yes, to the thirsty. Mm. Verse 14 says, bring water. Meet the fugitive with bread, O inhabitants of the land of Tamar. Yeah. For they have fled from the sword, from the drawn sword, for the bent bows, and from the press of battles. Yeah. Verse 16 says, but For thus the Lord said to me, yeah. Within a year, according to the years of a hired worker, yeah. all of the glory of Kedar will come to an end. And the remainder of the archers of mighty men of the sons of Kedar 
will be few. For the Lord will grind the into submission. The Babylonians. And you need to no longer depend on them. For I am the Lord. My brothers and my sisters. If there's one thing that folk need today. Is to turn to the Lord. We are looking for Biden to forgive our children's student loans. And I hope he does. But I know one thing that the same God that gives me bread when I'm hungry. The same God that gives me water when I'm thirsty. That same God is able to give me a few dollars for the student loan folk. And then, then if any of you are believers that you can make America great again. I want you to know you got a pipe dream. Help me somebody. America has never been that great. Anybody that presided over a period of slavery right. cannot consider themselves yes. a great people. Right. Anybody that any part was complacent with Nazism right. cannot consider themselves a great people. Yes. Now somebody say, well, you know you're anti-America. No, I fought for America. I served in the military of this country. I served not because it was so good. I served because I wanted to make it better. You don't hear me today. But one thing, my brothers and my sisters, that I realize is that this old world really cannot provide the things that I need. And so what must I do? I must go to Jesus. My battle act. I must go to Jesus, my rock in a wilderness. I must go to Jesus, my elder brother. Ain't God all right? Lest I hold you uh, too long today, I want you to know that Jesus has already fixed it. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, you're wondering uh, how uh, did he fix it? Well, uh, before there was a when, uh, uh, before there was a where, the Bible said that God uh, yeah, had a lamb uh, that was slain uh, before the foundation uh, of the earth. <laughs> Help me, somebody, uh, let's say Jesus. That was before the foundation of the earth. He came down from the tiny courts of glory. Stepped into a mean world. Stayed around him for 33 long years. He died. He died. On Calvin Hill. Somebody said he died. Until the moon Sipped away in blood He died Until somebody said Surely Surely It must be The son of God He died I tell you I'm talking about Jesus There's a little baby My rock In the weary land He died He'll walk with you. He'll talk with 
Jesus as your personal Savior. The Word of God has been clear. Over 2,000 years ago, the preacher says before there was a when or where, Jesus died on Calvary. The preacher said Jesus was buried in a barber tomb. But the preacher gave us good news this morning. And the fact of the matter is that he rose early that third day morning with all power and heaven and earth in his hands. What the preacher was telling us is that this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get right with God. If you never, ever, ever come to Jesus, now is the time. If you're going to miss hell, if you're going to make it to heaven, you're going to have to go through Jesus. Would you join me if you bow your head right now? I want to lead you in a simple prayer. Invite Christ into your life. Say these words. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Also the preacher said we ought to go to repentance. Repentance means to turn away from your sin. It means to reject what you've been doing and start doing the right thing. Repentance means that you say to God, God, you are right and I'm wrong. Repentance means, God, I messed up and I want to do better. Repentance means, God, I thank you for giving me another chance. Repentance means that, God, since you've given me another chance, I'm going to accept this opportunity. And I'm going to walk away from my sin. Which also says that we must turn to the Lord. Turn to God. 
It's not enough to say no without saying yes to somebody. I recommend Jesus. If you would bow your head with me, I'd like to lead, lead you in a repentance prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, we come now thanking you, Lord, for this privilege. Lord, we come realizing that we messed up. God, we've fallen short. We've missed the mark. We have not reached the target. God, we have sinned. God, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us, Father, to turn from our sins. We come now repenting of our sins. Lord, we ask you to give us the strength, give us the power. Give us the hope to not go back to our sins. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us to turn to you. In good times and bad times. We ask you, Father God, to bless us to be real with you as you are real with us. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen and thank God. Well, since I didn't make the program out, I don't know what's next, right? But I know what we can do. It's offering time. Hallelujah, it is offering time. When I ask Pastor Booker to come back and and, uh, and receive the offering. If you want to give electronically, you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's the book that's coming to receive Every heart say, Man. Amen. Amen. Um, everybody didn't hear me. Let every heart say, Man. Amen. All right. Oh, you heard me that time. Amen. We're, we're, we're here to receive uh, whatever it is that God has placed on your heart uh, to do in this service. There's always an opportunity. God has blessed us us to show gratitude by returning a portion of what he has blessed us with back to him. My boss at work one day asked me if I truly believed that it was better to give than to receive. To when I asked him would you rather I have to give to you you rather you would be in a position to give to me. I said, well, I'd rather be in a position to give to you. That answers your question. Amen. So whenever God blesses us, that we're able to give, uh, then we are truly blessed. Uh, the ushers have uh, envelopes uh, that they're willing to, ready to minister uh, to you and uh, so that you will be able to to give. Now I have a a special gift that I brought to Pastor Davis. I just left it in my other pockets. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I'm hoping that my wife will be able to bail me out, but if she if she can, you know, we've got these these quick electronic things, and so you can always. Uh, do it uh, electronically, uh, whatever. Uh, and so uh, we want to be sure to uh, get something special. I know that the, the uh, time that you all have set aside to show appreciation for Pastor and Sister Davis is up in November, but, but I'm here today, and I don't know what November holds for me, uh, but so I'm going to do of what I can do today. And listen, if you just want to uh, chip in a little bit of encouragement uh, to Pastor and Sister Davis, amen. And I've been saying all of these good things about Pastor, and uh, you can't say enough for Sister Davis. Amen. amen. Say amen, church. Amen. We cannot say enough 
for Sister Davis. Amen. Amen. Sister Davis is like that energizer bunny. She just keeps going and going and going. And if she ain't got them playing the steel drum, she got them playing the Home Depot buckets. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know, man, if you sit still long enough, Sister Davis will have a play in you. <laughs> Sister Davis, we salute you. Wonderful work. So, so, keep him going for another 19. Amen. Keep him going. And so we're, we're ready now. Let us bow humbly before God. God, we thank you now uh, for giving us this opportunity uh, to give. And we pray, oh God, that we would give uh, out of an abundance of blessings. That we would give, oh God, out of gratefulness to you for what you have already done. Not for what we want you to do, but for how you've already blessed us. We pray now that as we come, that we will give, oh God, not grudgingly or of necessity, but that we will give in a cheerful manner. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you come now and give us directions uh, on uh, coming? Uh, let us all stand. Amen. Let us stand and let's follow the usher from the rear. Amen. Just, just get behind the usher and she's going to bring you right to the uh, offering place. Amen. Come right on. Come right on. Good to see you, Brother Johnny. Bless your heart.
Jesus, come now. Amen. Is it? 
going to be. Even here in this horse pasture, 
that's now soul married. Thank you for being a bilingual church. Now, I don't know how a relative was able to, to interpret the hoop, but I think they got it. To our Latino friends, when we say hoop, that, that's when the preacher's voice changes. And that's when the preacher's excited. And I don't know how well Aurelia did with the hoop, I, but I know she changed from, from a baritone to a soprano. And I thank God for a bilingual church that, that we all don't want to call in serving the Almighty God. So God has been good. God is still good. And he's, he's entrusting us with much. Uh, Sister Nicole Davis, will you stand? This is Sister Nicole Davis. Uh, September 16th, we have our activity day. Please, ma'am, please, sir, get in touch with Sister Davis before she leaves. Because after the benediction, she's like, Skin! I mean, she's on two wheels going out the, the, the door. But she needs your help. She needs your help. Please volunteer for our activity day. We're focusing on reaching the community for Jesus Christ. And so we have that activity day that's on September the 16th. We will be doing basketball, volleyball. It's on a Saturday. And then they got this thing called Dr. Pastor. Let me just be honest and clear with you. This time they're gonna be pouring, pouring water on the pastor's head because I'm not going back in the bucket anymore, amen. Uh, the last time we did Dr. Pastor, I sat on a bench and people were supposed to throw balls and knock me in the water. But one lady, thank God she moved on. Uh, she, <laughs> one lady decided that she was going to dump the pastor, not with a ball, but on a now she just hit that thing and it snatched and pulled my back. And I was down for two weeks. So Pastor Booker, we won't be dumping the pastor this time. We'll be pouring water on the pastor's head and I hope you get great joy out of that, amen? So get in touch with Sister Davis so we can all be a part of it. Invite other churches. We invite Riverbrook. We also invite uh, Little Zion and any other church that's welcome. Please come. You're welcome to be a part of it. We want to do a great activity for this community. Let them know that church is more than just Sunday morning. So invite your friends. And, and when you invite them, tell them to come early so they can work. Amen? It's one thing about this campus. Whenever a male hit the campus, they got something in their hands, amen, and they're doing some work. Pastor Booker was 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 here doing the summer enrichment camp, and before he left, he was bowed down over there with a screwdriver and hammer <laughs> because Sister Davis saw him on campus. So we believe in people working, and we believe that we don't believe in men showing up and leaving, boys showing up and leaving. We believe that everybody all the work. So women, get together with Sister Davis, and we want to push this thing we want to impact this community in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. 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 Am I missing anything? Am I? I just want to make sure that it's clear. Boys and girls, we want you here because we want you to take place in the activities, okay? You say you play basketball, Gilbert Jacob. Let me see you play basketball on next Saturday. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we have revival on Comal Street at uh, Christ Way. For the last month, everybody been saying, hey, is this the Wednesday? Is this the Wednesday? Let me tell you, this is the Wednesday, amen? <laughs> this Wednesday, we will have, we will not have Bible study here. We will be on Comal Street at Christ Way where Pastor W.R. Bell is the, is the pastor. It's a three-day revival. Monday is Wednesday. And I wonder why I chose Wednesday. Uh, because uh, Wednesday is the night that we have our Bible study. And we want you to just transfer right over there. You don't even have to come out an extra day unless you want to come back for Thursday and Friday night of the revival. Looking forward to seeing everybody, everybody at the revival. Uh, Pastor Bell has already told me what I'm going to preach. So come on. So come on. Come on. When you get 110, you just do. When you get 110, you just tell folk what to do. And so Pastor Bell has already told me what I'm going to preach. So. Uh, please come out. Please be a part. Be supportive of your church and be supportive of the revival. Amen. Amen. I think uh, that's going to be it. Birthdays. If it's your if it's your birthday in this month, please stand. Please stand. Wave your hand or do something. If it's your birthday, I see Karen waving way in the back. Will you stand? If it's your birthday, stand up. 
We want to recognize you. Let us sing happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. September 24th is a birthday party. If you don't know what happens on a birthday party, if it's your birthday, you sponsor the party. Amen? So whoever is celebrating, is it July, August, and September members will be celebrating together. So uh, get together with those people who are uh, born in July, August, and September. If you're born in July, August, and September, stand up for us right quick so we can see who's going who's to be feeding us that day. Amen? Amen. We got a whole lot of folks on here. July, August, and September. Uh, please get with each other before you leave today so you can decide what I'm going to eat today. Amen. What I'm going, going to eat that day. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. To our business. Can I make that announcement, please? Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't know Hazel was not here. Uh, we have homework. We had homework in uh, February. Now we have homework outside. And uh, it's Latino Heritage Month starting with September 15th through October 15th. I'm going to ask that you take a picture of the board, get your slip of paper, go home and research the people that's on that board and bring the slip back to me. Okay? And you will get a kid. All right. We didn't do that for African American history. Well, African American history, they kind of sort of knew some of the people, so uh -huh. they kind of sort of guessed. But I guarantee, I won't. I didn't know any of the people, so I'm going to have to go home and research as well. Okay. Thank you. So um, on uh, fourth Sunday in September, we will have our program for Latino Heritage Month, which is September the fourth Sunday. We will have a a bilingual preacher in the pulpit that day. Okay. And this time it's going to be reversed from what we normally do. As on today, Pastor Booker preached in English and and Aureli interpreted in Spanish. But since it's Latino History Day, uh, the preacher will be speaking in Spanish and he himself will be interpreting in English. So we get a chance to see what the delay, delay feels like. Amen? Because it is a delay. You notice that you clap and then about three seconds later, they clap. <laughs> now we're going to see what it feels like when they clap. And then three seconds later, we clap. Amen. Right, right. So we will have a, a, um, a Spanish-speaking preacher, our preacher from the Holman Street Church. He will preach to us in Spanish. And then he will interpret himself in English. Amen. 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 Look at how you're looking at me. Good God <laughs> Almighty. In God good, God is such an awesome and such a great God. Also, Bible listening, we are, we're rounding the curve on Bible listening. We're rounding the curve. We're about to finish up the year. And now uh, we, are, we are looking forward to you finishing up your Bible listening and your Bible journaling. Make sure whatever you do, continue to stay in the Word of God. It is not Bible reading. It is Bible listening. And it's about three to four chapters a day. You can listen to it and then journal in your journal book. Ask what the Lord is saying to you. Amen. So continue to do that. And after every every single quarter, we give away awards for those who have completed their assignment. Amen. Amen. So continue to, even if you're behind, keep on listening. Get there. You can get there. One lady says she's finished the whole thing uh, for the whole year. And so we want to make sure that the rest of us keep pushing, keep pushing. If you've got behind, get back on the horse and try it again. Amen. So we're doing our Bible listening. Make sure you catch up. We're in Nahum chapter, chapter 3. Nahum chapter 3. So whatever you do, catch up and stay on board with your Bible listening. Amen. This is our prayer list. This is our prayer list. It's very extensive. Very extensive. Let me tell you, people need prayer. Amen. And even those of us who are not on the list, guess what we need? We need prayer. And so we want to take this moment to get together and pray. 
We are also praying for our Kevin and Katrina Whitlock. These two weeks, we're having them in prayer and on at, at uh, noonday every day. Our entire congregation and our visitors are lifting up the Whitlocks, that the Lord will bless their family, that the Lord will increase their family, that the Lord will give us some, <laughs> some crying babies right here. Amen. Uh, they said their baby's going to be manable and they're going to be in church and all that kind of care. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. How, I know how folk raise children these days. So we'll see how manable these children are going to be. So we're, we're, we're bombarding heaven at noonday every day for the next week. It's been it's going to be two weeks total. This next week, I want you to call on the Lord, and we're going to rejoice on Sunday morning and what God is doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. I only have one thing to say, and that is we need to pray like it's all dependent on God. And they need to work like it's all dependent on them. I'll leave it alone. I'm going on to something else. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you now. We honor you. We bless your name. We thank you for those who are on the prayer list. We thank you for blessing them and keeping them. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to continue to give us testimonies. Continue to walk with us and stand by us. Continue to bless us, Father God. Lord, we ask you to heal as only you can heal. Bless as only you can bless. We ask you to deliver, Lord, as only you can deliver. Show us great and mighty things that we cannot even imagine, Father God. Bless us now. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Thanks, Pastor Booker, to come back for the final words and the benediction. chocolate cake on the outside is chocolate on the inside is chocolate on the bottom is chocolate in the middle is chocolate it's filled with chocolate brother Turner I got some chocolate cake amen so if you want some you want a very little small sliver of my chocolate cake I'll give you some before you leave and then I got chocolate kisses in the bottom of it and I got chocolate nestlings on the top of it I have some chocolate and guess what? I'm going to be sick by the end of the day. It's not good for me. Let stand. Praise you and all of God's people said, Amen.